If you watch miniature painting videos of any kind, you probably come across the term edge highlighting all the time. And if you have already painted a couple of models or maybe even a lot of them, you probably already know this process as this really tedious thing that you have to do to make your models, especially the armored ones, look better. But there is a lot more to edge highlighting than that and it's actually one of the most useful techniques you can master as a miniature painter. And it is not only useful for highlighting the armor of space marines, although it is pretty good for that for sure, but mastering it is also essential for a lot of the coolest miniature painting techniques like non-metallic metal for example. So in this video I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to start painting awesome edge highlights of your own. I will tell you what they are and why they are useful, show you the tips and tricks I use to make them faster and better, and then we will go through a step-by-step -step guide to actually teach you how to do it on a model. Hey guys, I'm Zoltan and you're watching Phalanx Miniatures. Okay, let's get some of the basics out of the way first. What is an edge highlight? Essentially, edge highlighting is identifying an element on the mini, like for example an armor panel on a space marine, and making one or more of its edges brighter than the rest of that element. You usually achieve this by painting along the edge with a lighter color. At the basic level, you can paint continuous straight lines along the whole edge, but in more advanced paint jobs, you can also use a dotted line or just small dots and scratches. Most of the time, you would also use more than just one highlight on an edge. First you would use one that is slightly brighter than the base color, followed by an even brighter and thinner one and you can repeat this until you reach white. You can also highlight the upper facing edges, the ones catching the light more with brighter colors while leaving the rest of the edges darker, but still brighter than the rest of the model. That's fine, but why should you use this technique? Why does it make the mini look better? Well, light tends to reflect on the edges of real life sized objects and our eyes are used to this phenomenon. It helps us separate shapes and recognize details. However, on a small object like a mini, this won't be so obvious and recognizable, especially from some distance away. Without the highlighted edges, your eyes won't be able to distinguish the details and separate the individual elements from each other and the whole thing will look like a shapeless blob of color. Okay, let's assume I want to do this. The question is, which elements and edges should I actually highlight? That depends on the level you want to go for with your mini. If you want to do a simple and fast paint job, you should go for the most important and prominent details with a single edge highlight color, focusing at the edges that are facing up, so basically towards the light where the light would hit a normal sized object. If you want to save time, you can also focus most of your efforts around the most important part of your mini, which in the case of a human shaped model would be the torso and the face. But if you want to go for a complex paint job, you would probably want to edge highlight basically every element on the model, with several steps of brighter and brighter edge highlights, focusing on less and less of the edges as you go up in brightness while also making your lines thinner and thinner. Essentially, the more edge highlights you put on the model, the more detailed it will look in the end. It might sound difficult and complicated at first, and maybe it is a little bit, but it can also become second nature quite fast. Let's talk about the different tools that you would need to pull off this technique, including the brushes and the paints, and let's start with the brushes first. You definitely need some precision from your brush for this, so you need one with a nice sharp edge and a good point. This is a good time to bust out your best high quality natural hair brushes. It can definitely be done with synthetic brushes as well, but then the brush will work against you, which is not exactly ideal. Your first instinct will probably be to use the tiniest brush in your arsenal, but please resist this temptation. That tiny, super fine detail brush you use to paint eyes will not work here. Actually, I would argue that they don't work for anything else either, but that is a different discussion. Super small brushes hold very little paint, and if your brush dries out after a single edge, it will make the process extremely painful and slow. My go-to size for this is between a size 1 and a size 00, depending on how small the thing is I'm painting. In most cases, a size 0 is a safe bet. Just keep in mind that sizes can vary between manufacturers for some reason, so your size 0 might not be the same size as my size 0, which is annoying and defeats the purpose a bit, but not much we can do about it. So here's a comparison shot with my brush and the mini so you can see what I mean. I remember that when I started painting, one of the biggest issues I had was to find the perfect colors for the mini, and that included not just the base color, but also the corresponding highlight colors that I would use for the edge highlights. If you use the colors, they even label the paints accordingly. For example, if you want to paint something blue, you can use McCrack blue as your base color, which is conveniently labeled as a base paint. Then you can go for Calgar blue for your first edge highlight color, followed by an even lighter Fenrisian gray, both labeled layer paints. And this is a perfectly valid and quite convenient way to find your paints, but it requires you to own a ton of them and also puts a lot of pressure on you to know which layer paint goes with which base paint. But there is also a different approach that requires you to buy much less paint and makes the whole thinking process about figuring out which paint you want to use much much simpler as well. You can simply take your base color or mid-tone, essentially the color you want the thing you are painting to be. Let's say we are painting Ultramarine's armor, so our base color will be McCrack blue, which is a dark blue. 
instead of looking for another paint that can serve as my edge highlight color, I can simply mix in a little bit of white into the original blue to make a lighter version of the same color and use that as my edge highlight. And if you feel that adding the white makes the color too washed out and not what you are looking for, you can mix in some light yellow, like ice yellow instead, and the end result will be more vibrant and warmer. Then you can simply add a bit more white or yellow to the mix and voila, you have your perfectly matching color for the second highlight as well. For some reason mixing colors felt super advanced and complicated to me when I started, but at the basic level it is actually quite simple and you don't need a degree in color science to pull it off. So don't make the same mistake that I did, you don't need three or four colors for every single element on the model, you just need the one and then you can lighten it up with white or yellow. One more thing about paints. We will talk about this later when we get to the paint dilution, but in general it is easier to do edge highlights with paints that are a bit thicker right out of the bottle. The ones that are very runny and flow like airbrush paints can be tricky to use since you can always dilute thick paint but you can't really make watery paint thicker. So especially until you are more experienced with edge highlighting, try to stick with slightly thicker paints. For example Citadel and AK Interactive are great for this, but Greenstock World and Scale 75 are much harder to use for edge highlights in my experience. Greenstock World is too fluid and Scale 75 uses a gel medium that makes it behave quite differently from other brands so better to start with something easier first. Alright, so with all the theory out of the way, let's talk about how to paint some basic edge highlights. Let's say you already have your model base coated and you know which element you want to edge highlight, you have your trusty and not too small brush in your hands, what to do next? Let's go step by step. Step 1. Selecting colors. Let's select the paint for our edge highlights. The armor of my ultramarine was base coated in Macrack Blue and I would like to do two levels of edge highlights because I want him to be relatively well painted. Now I need to find two lighter blue colors for my edge highlights, so I select Cargill Blue and Fenrisian Grey, which despite the name is actually a light blue. Alternatively, I could mix white or yellow into my original blue, as I mentioned before. Step 2. Loading the brush. Once we have the paint selected or mixed, and we have them on the wet palette, it is time to load the brush with the paint. First we need to make sure to shape the brush in a way that the bristles are nicely pointed and the whole body is nice and neat without any hair sticking out. The dilution is a tricky thing to determine because it depends on what exactly you are trying to edge highlight, but for this armor panel I want to have something close to a base coat consistency. I don't add any extra water into the paint other than the moisture from the wet palette and whatever remains in the brush after rinsing it. I dip the brush into the paint at the edge of the pool of paint on the wet palette and then with a twisting motion I drag the brush out of the paint. This will make sure that the shape of the brush remains intact and some of the excess paint is removed from the brush. Then I repeat this motion on a paper towel next to my wet palette, lightly touching the brush to the towel while twisting it. Your brush should look something like this before you start the edge highlighting. Step 3 is bracing your arms and hands. One of the issues you might face when you try edge highlighting is that your hands shake and tremble and you just cannot paint a straight line for the life of you. But believe me, this is not unique to you. It's not like some people are meant to do edge highlighting and some others are not because they don't have steady hands. It's just that some people know how to brace their arms and wrists and even their fingers when they are doing highlighting. Essentially, the more stable points you can find, the better and the steadier you're going to be. Never try to paint an edge highlight or anything else for that matter with a free floating hand. You will never be precise like that. I would recommend to put both your elbows on the table when you start out. This way they will be stable and you only need to worry about moving your lower arms and hands. Now let's make sure that those are also stable. With your elbows planted on the table in front of you, touch your wrists together in a way that you rest the hand that holds the brush on the hand that holds the mini. At this point you can simply move the brush around the mini by moving your fingers only, without moving elbows or wrists at all. This will make you a hundred times more precise in your brush strokes. Sometimes you just won't be able to reach a part of the mini easily when bracing your wrists like this. In cases like that you will still need to find a point where you can brace your painting hand. This is where your pinky will be your best friend. Find a point on either the mini or on the hand holding the mini and brace your pinky against it, moving your hand holding the brush around it like around a gimbal. This won't be as stable as the wrist method, but it is still better than a free floating hand for sure. Step 4. Turn the model in the most comfortable position. Every model has an orientation that feels natural, with the head pointing up and the feet pointing down for example. And we tend to hold them in this natural pose and instead of moving the model around, we move the brush to accommodate it. And most of the time this is fine, but for edge highlighting this can make your life much more difficult. Painting an upward facing edge will be super easy, but painting one that faces down becomes a challenge. But it doesn't have to be. Simply turn the model on its head and make the downward facing edge become an upward facing one while painting it. Don't worry, your model will survive a couple of seconds on its head. 
Step five, let's paint the edge highlight. In an ideal situation, the edge we are painting is sculpted onto the model and it is nice and crisp. In the case of Games Workshop Minis, this is usually the case. So what we need to do is to touch the side of our brush to the edge and slide it along, depositing the paint on the edge. Ideally, use the lower third of the body of the brush for this, not the tip and not the upper part of the brush close to the handle. Assuming that you have the right amount and consistency of paint in your brush, the thing that will determine how straight and thin your line will be is the amount of pressure you will exert on the edge with the side of the bristles. Apply too much pressure and the bristles will slightly deform, letting the paint flow out uncontrollably, resulting in a thick blotchy line. Apply too little and your line won't cover the edge fully and becomes patchy. Both of these things can be good in certain situations, but if you want to paint a nice perfect edge highlight, you need to apply the right amount of pressure. You will need to experiment with this a bit and see what works, but it is always better to start with very little pressure first and then maybe do another pass, then make a thick line that then you have to repaint. Now that we know how to do basic edge highlighting, let's talk about how to use it on a model effectively. Let's say I want to paint the armor of an ultramarine to a parade ready standard using the colors we selected before. The process would look like this. Step 1. I base coat or spray the model with our base color, which in this case is McGregor Blue. Step 2. Using the first highlight color, which is Calgar Blue, I highlight all the edges, both the ones facing up and the ones facing down. I deliberately make this first highlight a bit thicker than the next one, so it will show up even if I go over the same edge with the next one. Step 3. Using the second highlight color, Fenrisian Grey, I edge highlight all the edges facing up, making sure that this highlight is thinner and fits into the previous one. It is not a huge issue if it turns out to be the same thickness though, since there is still going to be a difference between the up and down facing edges. Step 4. And this is optional, but I'll show you how to apply a third highlight color as well, something closer to white, in our case also in grey. I would apply this only on some of the most prominent upward facing edges and make it as thin as I can possibly make it. You can switch to a smaller brush for the last two highlights, which can make it easier to paint thinner lines, but don't go too small. There is one more thing missing from this process though, and that's not exactly edge highlighting, but the two go together like breakfast and coffee, and I'm talking about shading, or more precisely recess shading or black lining. The way edges and raised areas tend to be brighter on the model, so recesses and deeper areas tend to be darker. To create more contrast on the model and to further separate the different elements, you cannot just use edge highlights, or you can, but it's not going to be as effective. You need to use them in tandem with black lines or recess shading. How to do this could be its own video, so let me just demonstrate it on our favorite ultramarine. I simply use diluted black paint and paint it into the recesses and around the armor panel. Pro tip, if you find that this is difficult and the paint is not just going where it should, mix the black paint with some flow improver and all you need to do is touch the recess and the paint will just magically flow in there. Now that we know how to do edge highlights, the first question on your mind is probably, yeah, but what if I mess it up? And believe me, you are going to mess it up and that's perfectly fine. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to fix a messed up edge highlight. You simply use the previous color and correct the mistake with it. So if your first edge highlight is way too thick, you can take a bit of the base color and paint over it. If the second highlight is messed up, you can fix it with the first highlight color. But painting edge highlights is kind of like walking a tightrope. As long as you don't lose confidence and you don't look down, you are not going to fall. So just don't lose confidence in your ability to draw a straight line and it's going to be fine. Now should you always use the side of the brush? Not really. Sometimes the edges you are painting are not very well sculpted or are not easily reached by the edge of the brush. In this case you have to be more or less freehanding a straight line. Just make sure that you have your elbows and wrists braced and don't look down. If you mess it up, first case you have to paint it over or correct it a bit with the previous color. And do you always need to paint the perfect line? Not necessarily. You can make every line perfect if that is the style you're going for, but if your goal is a more realistic looking end result, you can consider only partially painting some of the edges. Maybe you want to apply your last highlight only on one of the corners, but instead of just abruptly finishing the lines, you can paint a couple of dots. Once you have learned how to do it well, you can mess it up a little bit to make it look more realistic, but before you do that, you need to know how to do it well first. Alright, I think that's enough to get you started on painting some really cool edge highlights on your minis. If you have any questions, you want to add your own tips and tricks, or you maybe want to criticize some of the things I said here, then the comment section as always is at your disposal. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one.